Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training and American Overwatch Canine Services. This here is Mr. Cody. He is a eight month old Australian cattle dog and we just finished a, a video just now showing you where he's at after four weeks of training with us. And now we're gonna talk about is the Australian cattle dog right for you and your family? Should you buy one? And the short answer is yes, 100% absolutely. Based on our experience as professional dog trainers with Mr. Cody here, you cannot go wrong. Now, that being said, not all Australian cattle dogs are created equal, just like not all German Shepherds are the same and so on and so forth. He just happens to be maybe a very special dog. Now, if they're all like this, I don't know why every family in America doesn't have one of these if they're all just like him. Amazing, amazing dog for the family. And this is why I like him in particular. I've never worked with a breed like this before. Um, I've worked with breeds like this. I've never worked with this breed before. Again, Australian cattle dog, also known as a blue healer. And the reason he's a blue healer is the coloring here. He's got more of the, with the black and the white hair, uh, gives him that blue appearance. Versus the red healers would have more of an, you see it in his face, the red coloring throughout their body. Uh, other than that, the same dog is just a different coloring. The reason they call him a blue healer is again the coloring, but the healer part is because they're bred to uh, heal cattle, right? Australian cattle dog. And so they're only this high off the ground. You imagine how a little guy like this can herd cattle. Well, they bite him on the heels to get those cattle to move if you were to have a stubborn one. And think about that, folks, that this dog who's maybe right now 35 maybe 40 pounds is able to move a 2,000 pound animal um, and you can imagine those cows kick I've heard stories that these dogs get kicked launch 30 feet in the air come right back and keep on working so he loves the little belly rubs one of the things that I found really interesting about him is that uh, his fur he's soft as a bunny now he's still a puppy but supposedly this fur stays like that I always thought that their coats would be kind of coarse it is very thick but it's it's soft. I mean, one of the softest dogs ever. So a pleasure to pet. Um, still has a lot of power in these jaws. Don't let them fool you. You can see the genetics in there. Like he could take care of business if he wanted to. He's a super sweet dog. Very sensitive to the e-collar, but he's resilient as you would expect a dog like this to be. Resilient meaning takes a lick and keeps on ticking, just like I described with you. If you were to get kicked by a cow, supposedly and get right back into business. So that makes them good for training too. So if you wanted to do um, what we would call balance training or compulsion style training, and you wanted to give them a correction with an e-collar or a prong collar, they don't shut down on you. They don't shut down. Um, very handler sensitive, I would say though, right? Um, very in tune with your energy like most dogs, but maybe a little more in tune because of the intelligence. Now, what you have to be careful for, careful with, with all very intelligent breeds, is their ability to be a little bit of a smart aleck, a little bit of a, they know what they can get away with. Some of the more, the breeds maybe like a Mastiff. Uh, I hate making such large generalizations, but let me suffice it this, to say it like this. Very smart dogs, Australian cattle dogs. Um, What's the other uh, one I'm thinking of? Australian yeah, Australian Shepherds. Um, all the dogs you would think of to be very, very smart uh, are also can be a little hard to control because they're gonna outsmart the owners and they know what they can get away with. And the same could be said about this guy. So we, you would call it being stubborn. Um, just gotta be watch out for that. Just because a dog's super smart doesn't necessarily mean they're easy to train. They might learn fast, but they could also learn really bad behaviors fast. They could learn that they don't have to listen to you very fast. Imagine you told a dog to sit a thousand times and they 999 times out of those thousand times, they didn't have to listen to you. Well, I guess you would say they've learned. They don't have to listen to you. So it's just smart dogs will learn that in nine or 10 reps instead of 999. So uh, we'll start walking and talking and moving and tell you more a little bit about uh, Mr. Cody here. Hey folks, we're back. Little technical difficulty. The uh, Our audio plug got pulled out of the camera right as we started the walk. So talk a little bit more about Cody and who he is to his family. As you see my awesome shirt here, Super Jake Strong. This dog is owned by a family uh, and was originally bought for a, a young man named Jacob or Jake and he's five years old. And like six months ago when they bought him, uh, Jacob had recovered from some, some health issues and was doing really well. And then of course, uh, I don't know how you want to call it, but disaster struck, and he got diagnosed with um, 
a health issue, pretty serious health issue, and the family was no longer able to train uh, Mr. Cody here. So they reached out and said, look, we're in and out of the hospital. We spend more time in the hospital than we do at home. It's not fair to the dog. Uh, we know how to train dogs. We've trained dogs just like this in the past. I think the family had owned one or two of these in the past, the, the, the father, and they're very familiar with the breed. Uh, but if you're going to be in, at the hospital, uh, you know, six out of seven days of the week, you're not going to be able to train your dog. And so that was the case with him. And not that he was like a really bad dog. In fact, he's one of the more docile dogs we've got right out of the gate. Uh, in fact, when I first got him, I'm like, ah, I don't even really see what the issue is to train. The worst thing he did was maybe jump a little bit and nibble if you pet him. Uh, but yeah, he didn't really listen, didn't really know his name, sit down, stay, didn't have any of that. He was just a sweet dog. He wasn't like mean. Um, kind of got off track there. But anyways, uh, Jake's still dealing with some issues in the hospital, getting better. And they definitely wanted him to be able to get uh, Cody here to to yeah, be able to hang out at the hospital, uh, go with them to restaurants, be a, like a, an, a service animal, so to speak, right? To be able to help him out should he need something. Uh, one of the things Jacob's dealing with is, is an issue with his legs and one of his legs and uh, he might need to lean, literally uh, physically lean on uh, Mr. Cody. Cody, come here. To help him get in and out of his wheelchair, he'll be able to lean on, on uh, Cody now and take him everywhere. And Cody's just a sweetheart. But we can't have Cody acting like a wild man in the hospital. And so that's why we trained him up to, to not eat grass. No, I'm kidding. We never teach him not to eat grass. But Cody, come here. Good. Need you to behave, my friend, while we're on camera. Yeah. We're talking about how well behaved you are and you're out here eating grass. It's still a dog, folks. No matter how much you train a dog, they're never going to be a robot. Unless maybe you're Bart Bellin. He somehow makes the dogs robots, but it takes like two to three years to make that happen. So anyways, breed specific. Um, an amazing animal for the family. Probably got off, uh, off topic just a little bit, but I've never considered this breed before. Wasn't real familiar with it. Thought they looked pretty cool. Knew they were tough, but... Now, hey, you know, if we were to ever have an op opportunity and needed to get another dog for ourselves, I would strongly, strongly consider this breed because I'm a little bit over having the giant breed dogs because it's a lot to handle, right? Um, but I like, I still like really tough dogs, but I like tough dogs now in a small package. And think of like an Amstaff maybe, or in this case now a Blue Healer. So he can be a sweetheart. But I'm telling you right now, you could probably do bite work. I don't know of anyone that's done bite work with a dog like this, but I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, it's in their nature to be very mouthy and to bite cattle. You just need to switch gears and teach them how to bite uh, sleeves. I think you could totally do it. Again, going way off topic here, but amazing animal, super sweet, super tough. I imagine they live a pretty good long time. I'm, I'm not out here telling you I'm a breed expert. I'm just letting you know it's when it comes to training a dog, an amazing experience training Mr. Cody here. Very smart, very motivated, very happy to please. A little sensitive to the handlers, uh, which is fine. That's him specifically. Uh, he's still a baby. He's only, what, eight months old now? So wait till he's two years old and he's fully mature. He's gonna be even more tough and more resilient. Um, I have my daughter come on over here and you can see how he is with little kids. You can hang out next to him, maybe sit down and give him some pets and belly rubs. And there you go. So that'll sum up your video right there. Is this dog right for you and your family? Yeah. Get him at a young age, raise him right, set some boundaries early, early on, get him into some training, give them a job to do. Like any dog, but especially a dog like this, give them a job to do. He's bred to run around all day long chasing after cows, so if you don't have cows, you got to fill that in with something. Uh, you don't want him running around hurting your, uh, your, your kids like they're animals. No, I'm not, they would probably naturally do that. Hundreds of years of you know, genetics coming in saying, this is what I'm bred to do. So give them a job to do. That could be playing Frisbee, chasing ball, going for walks, um, some, kind of, some kind of dog sport. Anyways, this video gets long like most of my videos. Uh, I hope you guys found this somewhat educational. Um, somewhat entertaining. Hey, Cody, come here. Let's close out the video. If you didn't see already, there's a video we just filmed, which is uh, what your what his training looked like. What his training would look like after four weeks. Um, we're letting him just be a dog right now. We do have him hooked up to an e-collar should we need it. Um, 
But anyways, this, this is a fantastic dog. I keep saying the same thing. Love this dog. I told the owners about just a few days into getting him. I'm like, ah. Uh. They told me when I took him and they all said, you know, don't fall in love with my dog. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, we get so many dogs in and out. I don't fall in love with each and every one. But Cody's a special, special dog. I mean, I'm telling you within just the first few days, I realized, Cody, come here. We're talking about you. Good boy. In just the first few days, I was like, man, this is a special dog. Really special dog. And so, yeah, yeah you, th Daddy. you think he's special? <laughs> what do you like about uh, Mr. Cody here? <laughs> you like that you can put a hat on him? <laughs> Let's see how he looks in my hat. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Good boy, buddy. What else do you like about Mr. Cody? Come over here. Giving him food. You like giving him food? You want to try a piece? Here. See if you can make him sit or down. Okay. Hmm? Yep. Let him know you have it. Good boy. Good boy. That's Little trainer in training. That's how you do it? Yeah. Cool. I just make him sit and then I make him down. Yeah. All right. So, amazing animals, folks. Go out there and buy yourself one. And again, don't let his little sweetness fool you. He's a little, he's a little, uh, give me a word here. Crazy. A little turd, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> he can be a little turd, but he'll come right into compliance if you let him know, hey, that behavior's not allowed. So, um, but if you don't, if you don't set boundaries, the dog will walk all over you, just like any other dog. So, all right, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys like what you saw today. If you do, uh, post in the comments below what you like. If you wanna see something else in the future, post that also in the comments below. And uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next video. Good boy.